a very warm welcome to the Racing Post Greyhound TV festive Friday preview show. Of course, it is a big day for Greyhound Racing on Friday the 23rd of December. There's no horse racing in Great Britain or Ireland, so we're going to shine a light on the doggies. Uh, we're in good company as well. We've graded on nicely. We're in open class company because the open racing correspondent from the Racing Post, Tony Bullen, joins us in the studio to pick his way through the cards and hopefully find a winner or two. How are you, Tony? Yeah, I'm very good, Dave. Santa's certainly come early. Good race in 23rd. Chance for the dogs to showcase itself and some good open race to get stuck into. And this has always been a, a big day for for the sport. We used to have the, the Bags Track Championship uh, on the 23rd. Uh, and again, we're we're going to shine a light on some brilliant racing as well. RPG TV is going to be on for 12 hours, 10 a.m. all the way through to, to 10 p.m. We're going to pick our way through uh, the sort of the cream of the crop, if you like, the open racing. We've got the Bet365 Challenge Cup, the RPG TV English Puppy Derby. Should be good. Should be good. I mean, obviously, the, 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 the pups um, will kick off first, but all roads lead to Oxford then, there should be some good racing. Absolutely, and I'll hear you ask, what is Festive Friday then on Racing Post Greyhound TV? Well, hopefully this graphic can give you a little bit of a clue. There are going to be 78 races from six different tracks. We've mentioned open racing in the afternoon at Toast, the featuring quarterfinals of the Racing Post Greyhound TV English Puppy Derby. And then in the evening, uh, that's when it all really kicks off. Open racing from Romford and open racing from Oxford. Headlined four minutes past nine by the £10,000 Bet365 Challenge Cup Final. So we're really looking forward to that. Remember, you can watch Racing Post Greyhound TV, Sky Channel 437, FreeSat 250, Freeview 264, and of course on the stream, the live stream free at Sporty Stuff. TV. Now, however you're watching us here, we're going to be on the Racing Post YouTube channel, the main channel, and we're also going to be on the Racing Post Greyhound TV YouTube channel. Do get in touch with us and mention in the comments below who you fancy, if you think myself and Tony or Wally's for our selections. We're going to be looking back on 2022 as well as looking forward to 2023 as well. So give us your comments. Remember to like and subscribe to the channels as well. Right, I think we should just crack straight on then. Uh, and we're going to start with the English Puppy Derby. Now, I do understand there's going to be one or two non-runners. We've had weather, freezing track. We've had traps malfunctioning. But we are at the quarterfinal stage in one of the big puppy competitions of the year. Clues, of course, for the Derby next year over course and distance. And we are going to now look at quarterfinal number one. Uh, my understanding is that Team News and Lostrig Paddy in traps two and six are going to be non-runners. So we will be left with just the four, um, but a, a big name on show here in trap four. Romeo Hotshot, the Romford Puppy Cup champion. And Tony, he was very impressive uh, when winning his first round heat. Yeah, he certainly was. This was him getting back on the right path, Dave. He won the Romford Puppy Cup in grand style and then just suffered a little bit of a blip. He went to Oxford and was eliminated from the collar. But this was Romeo Hotshot doing what connections know he can do. And this was him stepping up to a true four bends for the first time. And the question is, do you stay? Well, the answer was decisive because Romeo Hotshot got up on the inside and proceeded to draw clear from undulation. 29.40 run, underlined a good run, Dave. Yeah, and you can sometimes pigeonhole the, the Puppy Cup winner um, as a, an early pace merchant because well, of the nature of the, the 400 at Romford. But I thought he showed tremendous middle pace there. and. Um, it, the task is obviously going to be easier if Team News and Lostrick Paddy are non runners, as, as we expect they may well be. Um, it's going to be very hard to oppose, right? Yeah. Well, he's got a bit of an issue with Little Brothers Make It the Bear and Make It King Sydney because they both look identical. They're similar in speed to the bend and overall clockings. But you just saw on that VT, Romeo Hotshot's got the middle gears and the intelligent track craft. And I think he books his ticket in the semi-finals. Right, that will be two votes then for Romeo Hotshot. We move on then to quarter-final number two and my understanding thankfully is that they all go here which is absolutely fantastic. Um, interesting runner on the inside who we are going to have a look at and that is Ballymac Mags who've got to the final of the uh, Bet365 Puppy Oaks. This was her semi-final success and I think the most notable thing here Tony is this is the last time she was in trap one and that's where she goes in the quarter final. Yeah I mean if she could inherit a, a, a set of trapping boots Dave she'd be very dangerous. I mean she's good when she gets it right, but just that, that inconsistency at the boxes can just prove a little bit of a downfall. But she was the 
British Bred Oaks um, finalist, and when she gets it right and holds her position, you see she stays very strong. Yeah, she's got a good draw up on the inside. Um, it is an interesting race because there are, there are good all-rounders. There is good early pace. Now, I was very impressed by Droopy's Google um, digging deep to score in the first round. How did you see this one? Yeah, I, I was impressed with Droopy's Google. I mean, again, there wasn't a lot between the trio when they met on the 27th of November, and Droopy's Google really showed the right attitude. But he's drawn a little bit further out this time, Dave, and he's going to have to, A, counter the early moves, and B, track clever and I just think that Bally Mac Max can bully her way around in a handy position and you see how strong she stays in that VT. Okay, right. I can promise you that there will be different opinions at some point, but it sounds like it's two votes for Bally Mac Mags as well in quarter final number two. Right, we move on then to the third quarter final and this one features uh, the anti post favourite Patrick Janssen's unbeaten Romeo Command and we're going to have a look at him now and he was digging deep here he's asked a, a big question good time on the clock 29.54 he'd impressed at Monmore mainly really doing it from the front but he had it all to do here Tony yeah. and he, he passed with flying colours yeah he's a brute you, you, you could be forgiven for not realising that this dog is a pup um, but he, he's got it all Dave I mean he again a little bit tardy at the boxes but intelligent tracking around the first couple of bends and when he sees daylight this dog I know he hasn't won the length of the straight but it was a professional performance from a bright young star and of course my girl Mia Rhea poses um, she goes up in in trap one uh, Savannah Fella um, is going to be a non-runner from trap four we think uh, which will give Lively Lauren a, a squeak she's got a horrible draw she's very quick uh, she's a very tight rally she's stuck out in trap five but with a start, she could be a player here because she'll have that vacant box inside. Yeah, and what she's done, she's improved each look round toaster. And again, that might not be such a bad draw now with a vacant box on her immediate inside. So, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting runner. I mean, three looks is the, clearly the fastest in the race, but if he gets stuck in the pocket, Crowd City, he needs the gaps to open up. But he looks a worthy favourite for heat and outright. OK, we'll come to the outright betting very shortly, though. Uh, the... Expected non-runners will, of course, have implications on that anti-post market. Right, we move on then to the fourth and final quarter final. Remember, these races will be on Friday afternoon at Toaster Live on Racing Post Greyhound TV. Um, understand that Kalara Dazzler and Skywalker Isaac in four and five are intended non-runners here, so they may well not go, which will leave just three standing here, Tony. Um, pick the bones out of that. The bit of VT we're going to look at is Kalara Dazzler, unfortunately doesn't go, um, but we want to look at the dog who finished second here, because King Ezra um, finished well, as he did in his, his race before that, and he should have plenty of racing room on the inside. Yeah, I mean, Rob Holt, who's got Tricky's wrist, will be delighted that Kalara Dazzler is a non-runner, because that gives his fellow, I think his fellow will set the target for the others to aim at, but King Ezra He's got a solo on the inside himself, and I just think he can just bide his time, track, track free throughout, and then prove too strong for that rival. But yeah, free's going to set the target here, and the um, Irish Raider coordination should improve for a further look round, Dave. Okay, so uh, big mention there for King Ezra, who's got a great draw on the inside. Right, we have actually only had one round of this puppy derby, so we will have a look at the outright market as well. Prior to the non-runners coming in, we had Romeo Command at 4-1, to one, Romeo Hotshot at 8, My Girl Mia at 12s, Undulation at 12s, and then it's 14 bar. I'm going to now my colours to the mask very early and say I think Romeo Command is very special, um, and I think he's, he's going to get the job done here. Um, do you agree, Tony? You picked out anything else? No, I, I, I was with Romeo Command. Again, he can do it all ends. I mean, if he comes away running, it, there'll be a day when he does come away running and... He's already got 29.25 in a trial at Toaster, uh, done a 4.19 if they can produce that. Not sure they want to produce it in the second round, maybe the final, but yeah, he looks a, a serious talent. Droopy's Google, I did like the attitude he showed, but it's just that draw out in five that does worry me. Yeah, remember there are two rounds, of course, to come until the final, this quarter final, semi-finals, and then the final hopefully will be live on Racing Post Greyhound TV. But those quarterfinals definitely will be on Thursday afternoon. Right, we're going to move on then to, uh, well, the business. Uh, on Friday night, live on Racing Post Greyhound TV, there's £10,000 up for grabs in the Bet365 Challenge Cup final. Before we get on to the final itself, Tony, um, unfortunately in 
the world of greyhound racing we're more often talking about tracks closing uh, but Oxford has been reopened and what are your thoughts on, on the track so far? Well, it's fantastic for the area for starters because Oxford when it was open was a, was a thriving uh, venue and I like the circuit. I think the circuit is fantastic. It's kept pretty much the same distances Dave. The 450 is the standard, the sprint, the six bends and what I like with it, it's got a nice run to the turn. Like your Crayfords and your Romfords, you can get like four or five dogs go to the bend in a line and it's Skittles. With Oxford, I like the banking, I like the fact that the natural early pace dogs can sort themselves out, and it's not front runner's track. I mean, we've seen dogs come from last to first over four it's bends. It's a long run home off that last bend. The frost is 10 over the six bends, so as much as it benefits those early pace dogs, the long run to the turn, not the home straight, it benefits those finishers on the run for home. So yeah, I, I, it ticks a lot of boxes for me. It's up there as one of the best circuits that we've got at the moment. Okay, yeah, them long straights, they burn up plenty of petrol. There's going to be no hiding place in this final 650 metres. Four minutes past nine, the final. Racing Post Ground TV's Daryl Williams will be live at the track as well, bringing all the insight and interviews with everyone involved. Let's have a look at the draw then, shall we? The all-important draw. Got some uh, prices as well from the sponsors. Bet365 here. What a swell party on the inside. The Oni Railer in at 7 to 1. Chelms Cub, a middle 11 to 4. Gizmo Smasher is going to need a, a smash break. 6 to 1. Liquid Lunch, the uh, outsider at 50 to 1 for uh, young trainer Tom Leavers. Silver Spring Rear, 9 to 2 in Trap 5. And the likely favourite, certain to be favourite, Antigua Sugar in Trap 6. At the moment, 5 to 4, although we'll get onto that, but I think might go off a little bit bigger than that. Right, we are going to whiz through uh, and we'll have a quick look at each finalist. We will start with What a Swell Party and this was last time up, semi-final win and this is a stayer going the right way, Tony. Certainly is, Dave. I mean, one and eight four at Toaster this time last year, December last year, and didn't really build on it. Uh, obviously, the opening of Oxford, she won on her very first start over the 450 metres and I, I like the way she ran behind the Chelms Cup in the earlier round and I just think that what a swell party, this was a good run, you've got to take into account how slow this track was on uh, Saturday, uh, so to back run Antigua Sugar from that position, uh, that was a hell of a run and I, I think she's got a great makeup in the final. Yeah, she did come from a long, long way back in the, uh, the black jacket there to swoop and score and she's going uh, very much the right way for Kevin Hutton, she's got a good draw on the inside. Right, we'll move on then to Chelms Cub, who of course won the Toast the Hunt Cup and um, has trans translated that form nicely um, and been seeing out the 650 metres strongly. Uh, another one who's, who's going to need a pitch early on, Tony, switches to, to trap two in this final, but this was a, a decent effort in the black jacket. Yeah, missed the competition, this fellow. I mean, I remember seeing him at Hove and he's always a dog that's had pace, but he was a little bit of a clumsy type when passing dogs, but... I mean, Jason's really getting a tune out of him. Fourth in the Regency, fourth in the Stayers Classic at Monmore, fourth in the Ledger, and went on to win the Hunt Cup. And he just thrives on his racing. He's the type of dog that you can never rule out because he can quicken at a vital stage of a race, Dave. And you can see, like, he just gets up the inside there. It doesn't go past smoothly as you would like, but I think that's Chelm's Cup. He loves to hustle and bustle. Yeah, he's a relentless, relentless galloper for sure is... Chelms Cup. Right, racing room might be at a premium though on the inside early on. We're now going to have a look at Gizmo Smash, who is a semi finalist in the Eclipse at Nottingham. Classy over four bends. Goes in trap three for Lawrence Tuffin. Now, this was uh, finishing second in the first round. A good effort here uh, from Gizmo Smash, who goes in the orange jacket. But I think what's quite noticeable uh, rouse around the first two turns very, very tightly and could well take the ground of Chelms Cup and what a swell party early on. So we will have a look at Gizmo Smasher. This was finishing second in the first round in the orange jacket of, uh, of Trap 5. Picked up by Droopy's Garden. Um, unfortunately doesn't make it through to the final but um, has been running ever so well for Maxine Locke. But uh, Gizmo Smasher for Lawrence Suffin, the, the toast of the trainer. Got that early speed, looking to clear the inside and get across in the orange jacket. And as I'm saying, Tony, I think he's, he's going to again look for the inside. Yeah, he, 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 I like a dog that cuts the bend though, Dave, even if they're like a middle or wide, because it makes the others check up in behind. Unfortunately, that tactic didn't quite work because Droopy's Garden was in pursuit and we know how well Droopy's Garden stays 
keeps But this up is going to be Gizmo Smasher's race in the final, is it? Smash out, catch me if you can. It certainly is, and it could be a blessing. I mean, obviously, Connections would have wanted to line up in the Eclipse final, but he was eliminated from the semis. They've entered him for this event. I think they landed a bit of a touch. He won on a, a, a one-off six-bend open at Oxford, so he's got that early pace, but really does need to win the early battle. He does indeed, and uh, as you can see, there's more prominent actually in his uh, semi-final run as well, just how tight he is to the rail, particularly at the second bend there, and I think that could be the key to this race. He'll need a fast start to clear the inside draw. Right, we move on then to the outsider of the field, but certainly deserves a mention here, Liquid Lunch, who goes in trap four, likely to be a big price, uh, Bet365 got this one at 50 to one for Tom Leavers. At a homebred, Beach Grove Bell, of course, a bitch that Tom had uh, plenty of success with uh, one of the youngest professional trainers in the country and a Crayford trainer going places. He's got some nice youngsters. Without a win in six, uh, we're going to have a look at um, her finishing third in her quarter final. But um, she'll probably need the race to, to cut up a little bit. She looks like she's going to stay further than this 650. And if it does get messy, certainly one for, for forecast and tricast punters to have a look at, Tony. Yeah, liquid lunch, something you're partial to, uh, I know, Dave, but uh, look, was pitched in the deep end, but Howells from a decent litter, the Beach Babe, the, the litter sister, uh, contested the Savage final at Crayford, and they're, they're still learning the ropes. I mean, well bred out of Droopy's Sydney Beach Grove Bell, but again, just lacks that vital yard of early, and I'm not sure at this stage of his career he's ready to be claiming the sculpts of some of these that are in the race, but no doubt he's got a bright future, this fella. Absolutely. It's a big, big price there. Liquid lunch. Uh, what a good luck to Tom Lever's owner, trainer. Right, we move on then um, to Silver Spring Rear, who's another one who, who seems to be improving. Has raced over further, but early pace is the name of the game here, I think, with John Mullins' charger. And we're going to have a look here. Winning um, her quarter final, and this was a fair run as well. 40 13 was the winning time on a track graded 90 slow. Um, Fast start is absolutely crucial here because I think without leading, Silver Spring Rear could be up against it. Yeah, she's she, she's the youngest in 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 the final. You, you forget that she's um, younger than Liquid Lunch. She's had quite a few races, sixteen races. This was her sole success, but she had been running well. Connections had obviously knew that they had a, a decent youngster on her hand because they tinkered with her over distances, four bends, extreme marathons, uh, less ex. Dream Marathon over the 714, but yeah, this was a good run, Dave, and even in defeat, she'd been running well. Yeah, picked up by Chelms Cub in the semi-final last week, but another one looking for a far start. And then we get to the favourite then, Antigua Sugar, Toaster Juvenile Classic winner for 12 times champion trainer Mark Wallace, soon to be 13. Can uh, Mark cap off another fantastic year with Antigua Sugar? Um, I think the, the cold conditions, um, the testing conditions, have been against Antigua Sugar, and we're going to see um, her winning here first round of heat, but in, in quarter-final and semi-final, Tony, she's led and faded quite badly late on, I thought. Yeah, again, it'd probably if it was summer, she'd probably be bouncing off of the, the faster conditions, Dave, but she's always had the stamp of being a staying type, um, but she won the juvenile over the 500 metres at Toaster. was very impressive in that dual-distance event at, at, at Monmore, um, but... This is what I like about Oxford. There's, there's no hiding place. And although she's done the business in this particular race, she has found it stretching her stamina in um, quarters and, and semis. But she's got class. Yeah, I think she was the, the anti-post favourite for this competition. Uh, I'll bring in the, the draw and the betting in again with the 365's prices. You'll see that she is 5-4. to four. Uh, Would she be a lay or a play for you, Tony? I'm going to be against, I mean, you've got to take into account, this not necessarily the final we all expected. We had Havana Lover, Savannah Reinhardt in, in this competition, and it just goes to show you, that's what makes this sport so great. Nothing's ever set in stone, Dave. I'm going to be with what a swell party. I just think that she's a nice size bitch, she's 30 kilos, and I like the manner of her win. If you look at her run behind the Chelms Cup, she got a little bit of traffic in that particular race and was only beaten two. She tore to the drop the other night, I think at the prices, what a swell party could indeed be one. Absolutely. Well, there you go. Good draw on the inside. I am uh, boringly going to be with the jolly here, though. Although I think uh, Antigua Sugar is probably going to go off nearer to two to one than even money. Currently at five to four. I think if you just hold far and make sure your bookmaker is best odds guaranteed. I think a weighing gone, and uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier on, I think Gizmo Smasher could be the key to the race coming over to the rail at a turn. There could be trouble. 
and Antigua Sugar might just be away and gone. That is, of course, the Bet365 Challenge Cup final, four minutes past nine on Friday. Festive Friday here on RPG TV. Of course, no horse racing. So it's all about the doggies on Friday, four minutes past nine, £10,000 up for grabs and RPG TV live for 12 hours, 10 till 10 on that Friday. Right, we will move on then. Um, we've, we've, we're looking forward um, to, to Friday, but we're going to look back before we look forward again. Try and stay with us. Um, we've picked out a moment of the year each. I think it's, it's fair to say that Tony's is a little bit more original than mine is. Uh, but we'll start with, with Tony's because um, I've asked you to pick one out and you've come a little bit left field, but I like it because you've gone with Rising Coco winning the, the Labrooks Kent St Ledger, um, which was a, a local winner. Uh, but it was a hell of a race and a hell of a run. It was, and it, it, it wasn't that she just produced it in the final, Dave. She had upstaged the big guns in the semi, and people was thinking, ah, that was just a flash in the pan from the local. And you've got to take into account the opposition. Belmore Sally, so impressive when winning the Golden Jacket earlier in the year. And this was Rising Coco. Jim Reynolds got a tune out of her in this competition for sure. She's relentless. I mean, she's won over 380 metres, 540 metres, 714 metres, and local knowledge can prove key on many occasions. But it wasn't just the local knowledge, it was the pace that she put to the race throughout. And like you've got to take into account the opposition she beat. She beat them in the semis, and she's gone and chinned them when it mattered most at massive prices in both races. Yeah, I mean, it, you mentioned the field. Belmore Sally's in three, Blueberry Bullet in two, Burgess Hannah in four, Burgess Elite in five, and Bombardier in one, sent off 10 to one, didn't run like a 10 to one shot, so uh, that was a great performance there. Winner of the Labrooks Kent St. Ledger. Mine um, is a little bit less original, as I said, than Tony's. I've gone with the superstar of Greyhound Racing, Space Jet, uh, winning the TV trophy down at Hove, the Coral TV trophy. Um, I think in the last th few years, Tony, we've seen three exceptional stayers that should go down in history as as some of the very best marathon performers. Roxo Magic, Iams Royale, and this lady here, um, Space Jet. Um, to, to be good enough to, to win a St Ledger over the 7.10 at Perry Bar, that was of course last year, and then step up in trip and just look even better. She tracks smartly, she bides her time, she's happy to go inside, outside, and she stays forever. The better she goes, the uh, further she goes, the better she looks. I thought this was just a, an incredible moment. Uh, a good field and she's absolutely destroyed them. She's got an engine. I mean, that's, as you touched on, winning the ledger, the way she won the ledger, pulled clear to the pickup. How many times have we said, can't wait to see that go up to eight bends, but a lot of times it doesn't come to fruition. They don't stay. In Space Jet's case, the further they go, the better she is. She's just relentless galloper. I think she's seasonal, obviously keeps her off the card, but when she comes back fresh as a daisy, she's as good as ever. We could have picked a load of dogs, Dave. There were such good performances throughout the year, but I just think with Rising Coco, it wasn't just a one-off. She'd done it twice and when it mattered most. Well, we've looked back on our favourite moments of 2022 in this RPG TV Festive Friday preview show. We're now going to have a very quick look forward then at the big one, the 2023 Greyhound Derby. Now, it's probably a little bit too early to pull the uh, trigger for your anti-post bullets, but we're going to look at some of the big contenders and... As ever is the case at the turn of the year, um, Tony, we, we don't quite see some of the Irish big guns mm. coming over at the, the head of the betting. They'll no, no doubt be there come sort of April, May time. Um, we're going to look at two UK-based trainers who, uh, Greyhounds, who have stolen the headlines, um, one more so than, than the other. Um, we're first going to have a look at Kulavani Shadow. Now, we're going to go back and look at the matchbook maiden derby heat win here for Patrick Janssen's charge. We all know this was a, a big money purchase uh, and he's, he's suffered some shocking defeats since this, but there's no doubt in this dog's pace and ability. Oh, he's, he's one of the fastest dogs in, in the country without a doubt when, when everything clicks into place. Obviously, he, he picked up an injury when first arriving on the scene, but um, the Yarmouth derby looked at his mercy and hoped Paddington obviously denied him Big race success in that. He was brilliant in the first round of the Eclipse, then made a mess in the next round. As good as he is, he's the type of dog, if he wins a derby, he goes for unbeaten for me. I yep. think when he makes a mistake, it's a huge mistake. Um, and he's fast. Obviously, you've got to take into account where the, where the track, 
the venue is for the Derby toaster. I, I, I think it's a, um, a great level of toaster. Um, the run to the turn, the first two bends are key. And obviously with the seed in, I wouldn't want to be necessarily be drawn bang on a rail. If I had dogs like Koulibaly Shadow, I'd probably prefer to operate from the centre. Try and get them out of the boxes. Right, we'll have a look at the, the, the anti-post market, how it's shaping up then. And from what you're saying, Tony, we're, we're looking at from post to pillar at 16s, Ballin Bala Red 25s, along with Kulavani Shadow, Ballin McFinn, Kulavani Hoffer, two Irish trained stars. Uh, 40 to 1 bar, incidentally, two of note in there, Romeo Command at 66 to 1 and Romeo Hotshot at 66 to 1, two we mentioned a little bit earlier on when previewing the, the Puppy Derby. From what you're saying, um, you're obviously not being drawn in by the, the 25 to 1 not and, a, no. and could be a vulnerable ground in a Derby campaign. Yeah, no, so I, I mean, I'd probably look for something that can keep on qualifying that you can then do a bit of trading set come semi-final um, time uh, but yeah they, they, from post to pillar Kula Mani Shadow Ballin Ebola Ed he looked unbeatable in the early rounds didn't he Ballin Ebola Ed and then it, it went wrong and that can happen at any venue but Toaster I just feel that the margin for error is a, is a lot more important and vital OK well Tony mentioned from post to pillar who uh, propelled himself to outright favouritism with most of the bookmakers with this dazzling display just recently at Hove in the Coral Olympic final. Now, it has to be said that I don't think there was bundles of early pace on showing this final. There were one or two staying types in there, but you cannot take anything away uh, from him. He, he's, done, he's done the business, of course, in the, the puppy collar at Oxford, uh, and he's done the business here in, the, in this Olympic. His semi-final run was incredible. Um, just to qualify, he looks the real deal. He certainly does. He's, he's a lovely balanced dog. Nice, again, nice sized dog. He's got it all. The only thing, he's not a lid pinger, but he's three strides. Once the feet hit the sand, that's when he really opens up. And you can see to the eye, uh, I know he's marked, he's white and black, so he, he, he's sometimes difficult to gauge how quick a dog's travelling, but that fella covers the ground. You can see what a stride he's got on him when he gets into a rhythm. Again, He's another dog. He did get beaten at Toaster. He wasn't that pizzazz. Wasn't necessarily there at Toaster. He'll probably get better the more looks around he has. But these dogs will put up good runs in solo trials. Give them solo trials. They're going to put up their 29 10s, 29 deads, 29 20s all day long. In a six dog race at Toaster, it's a different ball game. But I, I did like what we saw in the, the semi finals. I mentioned he got it all wrong. He found yeah. trouble at the turn. He didn't down tools, which he, he could have done. He certainly could have done in a, in a good field. He battled hard to keep qualifying, and that quality will stand him in good stead during the derby, won't it? And as you touched on now, that's against strong running dogs over 500 metres at, at Hove. So Hove is testing. You know, Oxford, he was different speed and showed it, and he's shown it there. And the thing is, he's far from the fin That's the frightening thing. He's far from the yep. finished article, Dave. Now, it's not binding, but if I was to, to press you for, for one, if you was to have a derby pick now, who would it be? I don't see why. I mean, you've you got to run the track. And obviously, last year's winner. I mean, he, he run the track really well, got the middle. He's still holding his own in top bracket company in Ireland. You know, if he's, if he's up together at derby time, you, you've got to give defending champs consideration because they've been there, done it, through a gruelling derby. Well, what story that would be. Romeo Magico, of course, winning the first derby for Graham Holland. Team Holland will no doubt bring the heat again, and uh, all being well, he'll be in that team. Around about 40 to one shot, I think. 40s, 50s maybe out there. Romeo Magico. Right, um, we've looked forward, we've looked back, we've looked forward again, uh, but we will remind you, of course, why we are here. Racing Post Greyhound TV. Festive Friday. This is the preview show, but we are all about Friday, the 23rd of December. There is no horse racing, so it's all about the dogs. Uh, 78 live races, 12 hours of coverage from six different tracks. Of course, four minutes past nine, the £10,000 Bet365 Challenge Cup final. That's our feature. We've got the Puppy Derby in there, open racing in afternoon and evening. The action will be fantastic. Make sure you tune in. Sky Channel 437, FreeSat 250, Freeview 264, and of course on the live stream, sportystuff.tv, which is free and live to view. Um, don't forget, of course, we are on the Racing Post YouTube channel and the RPG TV YouTube channel, so give us a comment below. Maybe you've got a fancy for the Derby. Who do you think is going to win the Challenge Cup? 
Are we talking nonsense? I'm sure there'll be some people out there uh, happy to, to add that comment as well. But do like and subscribe to the channels. Um, Tony, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, what's the Christmas plans? Watching the ground action on the 21st. Of course, of course it is. Of course it is. Thank you for your, your time and, and insight. Of course, we're looking forward to that action. Do remember, of course, to uh, gamble responsibly. And more importantly than anything else, have yourself a Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching.